Hello everyone, it's Canadian Futures Trader here. It is March 2021, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through my Jigsaw Day Trader setup for when I am trading either the equity indexes or crude oil will be the products you would typically see me trade in this setup. I'm recording this video because I plan on putting together more uh, videos where I record my entire trading session, maybe set some goals, and Rather than explain in each of the videos what you're looking at in Jigsaw, I can just put in the video, hey, if you want to understand what, what everything is on my screen, go look at this video that you happen to be watching right now. So let's get started. I'm going to start on the right and we'll work our way left, although we're going to jump around a little bit just because there's a few things that overlap here and feed into each other. Uh, so first things first. Um, I'm logged into a demo account or a sim account, if you will. Uh, it's tied to my Trade of Eight uh, account, just so you know. So, I mean, I can click around here and show you guys some stuff, and it's not real money for this. Um, so, on the right, you basically have the trade box where you can initiate everything. Uh, the product you're trading, it's my demo account. Um, you can predefine quantities. Now, the, the quantity that's in this box is how many you would actually execute. So, if I was to click in here and buy or sell, this would be the actual number. These are just shortcuts to change this. Now, I only have ones and twos in here. You could change these to be whatever, like uh, 100, 50, 25, 10, and 5, or you know, whatever you wanted them to be. So I just have ones and twos for now. Here you can set the type of order. Jigsaw is terrific. It's never screwed up. I just set it to auto. It automatically knows what I want to do based on where I'm clicking. If I here, uh, time and force, you just set it to day. Here, you can have strategies, so you can predefine a bunch of strategies if you want or you don't have to. Um, I have this one set, so I will actually just show you what that does now. If I was to put in an order here, I'm just going to sell just to make it execute. Um, it automatically put in a stop loss, and that's what this is. So it says 2Q8L. For me, that's my shorthand version of quantity 2, 8 tick loss. So this was 8 ticks off, and that's my quantity of 2. Um, I'm just going to, I'll just leave this trade open. So uh, again, it's on SIM, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, these buttons, I mean, it doesn't matter too much. Basically, if you click them, it's a quicker way to move around your stop. Uh, OCO, etc. Market orders, bid ask. I don't really use these typically. I just, I do all my trading right on the DOM. Uh, you can trail, so if I highlight the trail and I put in a new stop, it would automatically start trailing it by this many ticks. You don't have to use that, and it has to be activated when you put the, the trail on. Uh, of course, flat and cancel. So the biggest things I'm doing here, honestly, is picking my contract size, setting a strategy if I want to use one, or you can just leave it blank, uh, and using flat and cancel. So. Um, I'll just leave this trade on for now. By the way, I'm recording this in the evening uh, on a weekday, so that's why there's almost no activity here. I mean, this is ES, but there's next to nothing happening. Uh, if anything, it's probably like a little bit less distracting uh, to look at. So moving over here, these are called power meters. Uh, they're activated through this. You can tailor these. There's lots of different ones you can put up. The ones that I have uh, are on the right hand side, these are contracts being added and subtracted from the bid and the ask. So I said we need to jump around a little bit. This outside purple column and this outside green column are contracts being added and subtracted from the bid and the ask, which are the inside columns. So, oops, I accidentally clicked there. I'm just going to get rid of this. Uh, so, inside green column, inside purple column. You know, there's currently 26, if you look at this right now, on the bid and the ask. And these are contracts being added and subtracted. So that's what this meter is showing. So it's a quick visual rep representation, essentially. If there's a lot of green, that means a lot of buyers are adding contracts, but are adding limit orders. A lot of purple means a lot of sellers are coming in, like they did just there. So um, the next sort of column here of numbers is a tally of the bids and the ass, and I have it set to five, a depth of five. So it will count down the current five and the current five here. So again, you get a picture of at the next five prices down and at the next five prices up, how many buyers and sellers are there really? So again, how I use these, I mean, I don't trade necessarily based off of these, but if I start seeing a lot of purple and a lot of purple, the sellers are pushing things down. It's the general gist of how things work. So uh, I'd say these are a little bit more relative and useful during the day when there's actual like a lot of trading volume. Like right now, there's really essentially nothing is happening. I wouldn't you know use this information. 
I'm going to jump around again. Coming over to this column here, this is your volume profile, if you will. These are the number of contracts traded at each of these prices. What these two columns are is the number of sellers who came down and hit the bid and the number of buyers who came up and hit the ask. So it's basically a breakdown of these numbers. Now, this is just an accumulation. You can't really reset it. These can be reset it and you can have it be reset each time you enter a trade. So you can also clear them out. So for example, if I just clear things out now, you see that all disappeared. So you can clear it out if you want a fresh start just to see what's happening from this point forward. Um, again, just a bit of information to have on the screen. I would say, uh, you know, it's not the most important thing on here, but it's useful to have to see if it was a lot of buyers. So when you get to a certain price level, was it a lot of buyers pushing up into it or was there a lot of sellers pushing down, etc. Moving across, so we, all, we kind of touched on the, the purple and the green columns already. Again, the inside columns are basically your traditional DOM, your depth of market, your, your buy orders and your sell orders. This is the limit, this is the order book, etc. cetera. Uh, the outside column is just contracts being added and subtracted. I'm gonna recenter this here. Um, we're actually in our kind of fake trade here. We're, uh, we're doing pretty well. Um, I'm actually going to move my stop loss down. Not that it matters. Again, this is complete sim, but just to show you how that works. Um, the inside columns here are contracts actually traded. This is probably one of the most important two columns. These show actual contracts being traded. So at each price level. So you know, you might have X amount of contracts on the bid and the ask, but seeing how many people actually execute an order at that price is really important. So uh, these will update and they'll clear out. So if the price moves down and comes back up, they'll clear out and they'll only show like the current price or the current trades at that price at, since the last time it reached that price, if that makes sense. Uh, this is obviously the price. So we're looking at ES. This is the volume profile. I mentioned that. This column is profit and loss for your trade. Uh, that's kind of why I want to leave this trade open was just so you can see that. Now I've obviously kind of customized the colors here. Jigsaw is traditionally a sort of blues and reds. I changed mine to greens and purples. Um, I'm going to leave this open for a while so I don't want it to close me out there. Um, so that's your that's your, your depth of market and uh, this over here is just kind of extra fluff if you will but uh, I put it up only because I have the real estate to do so. Uh, right here with this chart up, you kind of get this nice extra indicator. So it shows that I'm short two contracts at this price. Here's my two S or my two stop. Uh, so because I could get rid of this PL column and uh, I've tried to work towards not trading with the PL on the screen, just, you know, not worry about the money side of it. You know, sometimes we get influenced, you know, I might see it getting, you know, close to 200 and I'm like, Ooh, like, you know, let me just see if it could push down to 200, whereas really I should be trading the trade based on the merits of the trade and not the money that you can make or lose. So uh, I do like getting rid of this, but having this up, I get to see exactly where I'm at in the trade. So um, this last part, this big box over here, this is called Auction Vista in Jigsaw. It's essentially a heat map. Uh, I mean, it's fairly self-explanatory, obviously. Uh, it just ticks around. The greens are buys, the reds are sells. Uh, it has a little bar here at the current trade level and it's red if it's been hitting down if it moves up it'll turn green or blue sorry it turns blue um i didn't quite adjust the colors on this part of it and all these sort of white gray you know different levels here basically indicate how much depth there is at each level so right here you see a very solid white line and that's because there's 84 contracts on the ask right there and that's kind of the biggest number right so that more heavy concentration the thicker the line so it's just a visual representation of how deep uh each of these levels are again here you see like 50 50 50 40 30s it thins out you see that right here it gets goes from like the heavier whites to here now this only shows uh, i believe it's 10 levels of depth but this uh, can actually pick up the data for below that so you really get a nice visual sense and again i'm just going to center this of you know what you might run into so we're not really seeing it right now but we kind of see like down here there's going to be a lot of resistance if the prices come down here uh likewise you know there's this bar here but once they break through it there's not as much resistance so and we see that i mean in the numbers right here as well in this uh, purple column so guys that is a general overview of 
my Jigsaw Day Trader set up. Uh, again, oh, it's going to get me out of the thing. It hit my stop loss, so that's fine again. Like I mentioned, this is Sim. Uh, so I'm hoping to do some videos in the near future where I just scalp, uh, probably be mainly scalping ES and NQ, possibly CL, but more likely uh, NQ and ES. And now you understand what will be on my screen. So if you're watching this video because I directed you here, uh, oh, we see it right here. Just as a point out, this has nothing to do with the setup, but I mentioned, you know, they kind of run into this this wall of 75. That's a little bit of what's happening. And uh, you see it right here, you know, that they come up and they're not able to bust through it. So kind of a visual representation. Uh, I suspect, though, they're going to clear this out now in a second. So anyways, guys, that is it. Uh, if you want to see my video for my setup for the treasuries, I'm going to make the same type of video for my treasury setup. I'll look for that on my channel, and I will see you in my trading videos.